A man with white hair and bright yellow eyes was hugging the girl from behind and talking in her ear, which she said herself about having instincts. After all, even a trained dog has them. How would he be without them? The girl did not understand to whom this unfamiliar voice belonged and replied that he misunderstood her. While the man held the blonde tightly by her waist and shoulders, the girl wondered whether all this was happening to her. The white-haired man leaned closer to her, scalding the girl's ear with his breath, and said in an ingratiating whisper that wasn't it possible to misunderstand his own desires and assured her that he was worse than any beast. But after all, she already knew that well. Calling Celia. Celia was blonde with green eyes, and she softened in the man's arms and opened her neck to him. The white-haired man brushed against her soft skin, eliciting a moan from the girl. The man assured Celia that she had raised him decently, and he wasn't dangerous at all, but he asked her to be nice and help him. All she had to do was be there for him always. The blonde woke up screaming and sat up on the bed. She was breathing heavily and was all red. It was a strange dream. The protagonist didn't realize who was this man who was whispering so passionately in her ear. His facial expression seemed strange to her. Celia touched the place on her neck where the man had touched her with his lips with an embarrassed hand. She was distracted from her thoughts by a creak in the shawl-covered cage. The girl, rising and putting on her slippers, remembered that she had a baby boy. She pulled the handkerchief to check on her pet and found a terrible picture. In the cage lay an unconscious little fox with several tails. He had snow-white fur, but only a terrible and bloody wound on his side spoiled the whole view. A few days ago, there was an increase in the illegal transportation of monsters from the eastern continent. Nevertheless, a large-scale sweep was carried out, in which the protagonist participated. She was dressed in warrior gear, richly decorated with gold and silver. On one shoulder, a lion was qualitatively and beautifully depicted. After the sweep, Celia and her group were in a temporary lull, and the baby she found during the operation needed help, so she couldn't pass it by and decided to take it to her home. It was a monster from the eastern continent. Someone called out to the girl. It was a little old woman. She lifted her handkerchief and looked at what was in the cage. The old woman exclaimed excitedly that it had been a long time since she had seen such a thing. Celia didn't even see her at first, and watched in amazement as the old woman examined the cage. Suddenly, the woman applied magic, and the girl found herself in a beautifully furnished room. The protagonist realized that the old woman had used an oriental spell, but she was no longer an old woman, but a young girl with black hair and eyes, sitting on a throne in a beautiful and rich kimono, and looking at her with a confident and penetrating gaze. Celia apologized and asked her if she was from the eastern continent. The young girl, placing her elbow on the armrest and propping her head up with her hand, replied that there were such times and asked her guest to sit down. Celia sat down and wondered where this girl had come from so suddenly. The young girl began to tell the protagonist that spirits are born with one tail. Every hundred years, another tail grows. The number of tails represents the power the fox has, but she took the handkerchief off the cage and asked Celia to look at the poor, wounded fox. He already had nine tails, although he was still a baby. The blonde asked in surprise that if this baby was already 900 years old, the little girl answered that maybe even more, because this child was a child of heaven. The girl was silent and then asked again in surprise. The little girl began to explain that when a thousand-year-old demon learns the truth, it becomes a sacred spirit of the heavens, just like the unicorn in the western continent. The blonde asked that maybe she should let it go then, but the young girl irritably replied that it would be a careless decision. She looked thoughtfully at the caged fox and continued that this animal was born from a spirit, so it was very dangerous, and if you just let it go, it would start attacking people. Then Celia calmly, without regret, said that he would have to be killed. But the little girl angrily replied that those who harm a divine creature would be punished. The main character asked what she should do now. The young girl thoughtfully replied that she had caught the wrong guy, and deciding something, jumped up to the blonde and grabbing her chin to look at her asked her what her name was. Celia said her name. A small girl with black eyes with small white speckles like space 
said that the girl should raise this baby and then take it to the eastern continent. The protagonist excitedly asked again. The witch replied that this monster could take on human form. It was truly amazing. And depending on his upbringing, he could become either a gift from heaven or a monster from hell. She asked Celia to listen to her carefully and continued that in the eastern continent, she would have to let him go if she wanted to live a normal life. The protagonist doubted and wondered whether she would really have no problems at all and asked the witch if the inhabitants of the eastern continent would be in danger. The little girl answered that no, because the fox himself would find the traces of the heavenly spirit that ascended to the clouds and reunite with his mother. Celia wanted to say something else, but the witch didn't let her. Applied magic that was already ready to dissolve the room she moved the girl into, and in a haze of her magic, lastly said that the girl should raise this demon because she didn't want the child of heaven to turn into a hell spawn. She asked to listen to her words, and then she vanished into thin air, leaving Celia standing in the same place where she had met the little old witch. She stood surprised in the middle of the street and looked at the last remnants of magic. Next to her was a cage with a fox. Celia stood in her room and looked at the poor little injured fox. It was now her job to raise him. It had never happened before that a human had cared for such a baby, but she excitedly hugged herself with one arm and thought that if this crumb stayed with her, it might die. A squad was practicing outside under the blazing sun. The armor-clad protagonist counted off the last time and announced the end of the training. The men holding their swords in their right hands furiously struck their chests and shouted, That's right! Celia walked down the street to the house. She applied a bandage with healing herbs from the healer, but the girl wasn't sure she had done it right, and holy water couldn't help either because he was a monster. The girl was called out by the night. He was confused. Celia asked him what was wrong, calling him Eric. The guy started to say that they had dealt with monsters until late last night, and there was still training to be done today. He thought Madame was overdoing it. The blonde replied that there had been more and more bouts lately, and no matter how hard the training was, it would benefit the knights in any case. The knight confusedly replied that she was right, and when already the girl turned away, hastily shouted to her that he would remember it. It was late at night. The baby was sick, clutching his eyes and curled up. Celia jumped up to him, excitedly claiming that he was even worse, the girl clutched her head, thinking that she would be glad to ask for help. But she didn't know who would want to help him. But then it occurred to the blonde that it wasn't her who needed help, but this child. So the priestess simply couldn't ignore the sick creature. A girl with purple hair and huge round glasses screamed as soon as she saw the crumb and asked for it to be thrown away immediately. She was dressed in sacred robes with beautiful golden designs on her hands and headdress. The priestess shouted that it was Kumiho, that it was bewitching people and sucking out their life force. The little fox opened one of its bright yellow eyes. The girl kept yelling that she never thought Celia would call her to cure the monster. The girl, rolling up her sleeves, confidently decided that this wasn't the way to go. And before it got worse, she didn't finish as Celia interrupted her, asking what she was talking about. The priestess shouted furiously that didn't the girl understand what had to be done. After all, he had to be killed and was already on her way to finish him off herself. Celia grabbed the girl's hand, stopping her and called her Priestess Shura, sadly asking if he couldn't be helped at all. The girl's fervor subsided. She turned to the little one and uncertainly began to say what was really, but did not finish, as the little sly fox opened his beautiful eyes and looked at the priestess. The little fox had somehow affected her with his gaze, and the girl stared at him mesmerized, blushing, shouted that she felt something and maybe it wasn't a kumiho at all. She had goosebumps all over her body. Maybe this cunning creature had mesmerized the blonde. Celia had been standing behind her the whole time, looking at the priestess perplexed. The blonde asked her if she really looked like she was possessed. The girl started to deny it, but the protagonist continued that it was a supernatural being born from a fox. She had been told so by a priestess of the eastern continent so she thought her words could be trusted. In any case, Celia admitted that she herself didn't think she should kill the fox, and told the priestess that she herself knew that her gut never failed her. The fox had already opened its amber eyes and was staring at the girls, 
as if waiting to see what they would do with it. The violet-haired girl replied that she believed the blonde, but she had doubts about trusting the priestess from the eastern continent since she had been banished for terrible sins. The cute little fox yelped at the girls and stood on his feet, spreading his long ears apart. Shura and Celia stared at him, but the priestess could not stand it and began to shout that he was an insolent fox who dared to mingle in their conversation. But the little fox did not want to listen to her and again raised his voice. The main character replied to Shura that it was true that the witch from the eastern continent had been banished, but she thought that she still possessed strong spiritual energy. She thought that the little girl was still under the protection of the god of the eastern continent, so her words could be believed. Shura didn't stop, and waving her hands to the side, told Celia that it was all somehow unfair. Why should a blonde woman be in charge of raising this fox? After all, they served the god of the western continent, and this cunning fox was a monster that came from the lands of the eastern god. It was obvious that it should be handled by a follower of the god of the eastern continent, and it would be even better if it was taken by an eastern priestess. Celia thought about it. She remembered the witch's stern look and her words that the girl should raise this demon, because she didn't want the child of heaven to turn into a hell spawn. The main character herself didn't know why it had to be her. The girl of the table was thinking about her own. Shura stared at Celia. This was an incredibly skillful girl, unanimously chosen. The protagonist was the leader of the Holy Knights of the Grinia Empire and was her personal savior. The priestess wanted to thank her so she served for her day and night. Shura watched the girl and realized that she had no weaknesses at all. The priestess thought she could finally return the favor so Shura hightailed it to the main character. But instead, Celia asked her to cure the monster. The blonde apologized to the priestess that everything happened so suddenly. Shura sat on her knees in front of the cage with the fox and answered that it was nothing. It was the Lord's request. Celia began that it was a rather personal matter, but the priestess interrupted her and said that even if she had asked to tell everyone, she still wouldn't have done it. The girl opened the cage to the fox who had already taken out his little spout in impatience. Shura, taking the sly fox in her arms, said that if she had blabbed that the commander was raising a kumiho, she would have been considered crazy. Although even now people think she's a little crazy. The priestess examined the fox, asking if it was a boy. Celia leaned toward them, mewing questioningly. The girl turned the baby over and cheerfully urged the blonde to see what kind of baby it was. But the fox cub grinned and attacked Shura. The girl screamed. Celia thought that perhaps she shouldn't talk about it so openly. Looking at the fox's uneasy character, the priestess said she thought he wouldn't be so easy to raise. The blonde reassured Shura that everything would be all right. Because in a year he would be an adult, the priestess interrupted the commander, thoughtfully saying that in a year she would be 24 and asked if she was thinking about marriage. Celia replied that she wasn't interested. Then the girl asked that she wasn't even interested in just a relationship. The protagonist confirmed that she wasn't even interested in a relationship. Shura asked her if she was not lonely, for she had noticed that the girl did not even have any friends. Celia, her eyes downcast, replied that the god of the western continent had given her life, and that was more than enough for her. The priestess confessed that she had never met such resilient people as Celia before and warned her that you can't stay like this for long. The fox was sleeping in a cage, Shura said as she helped the little one. She reassured the protagonist saying that he would recover quickly, so there was nothing to worry about. Celia thanked the priestess. Shura, blushing, said that she did not understand the girl because how could one be so naive? The blonde looked at her incomprehensibly and asked if she was talking about her. Shura replied that he was talking about her and expressed her thoughts that it seems the girl doesn't understand what kind of person she is at all, because leaving a nine-tailed fox near her is like throwing herself right into the mouth of a predator. Celia had replied to the girl that she would raise him until she returned to the Holy Lands and send him east afterward. So it was simple, the blonde thought. But the priestess became agitated and gusty, and began to accuse the commander of being too careless with the kumiho, and asked her how she was going to appease a hungry fox, for it was a beast that sucked out life force 
and it was made worse by the fact that it was a man. But the protagonist stood her ground and believed that if she raised him correctly, the fox would not harm people. Shura cried out worriedly that she was worried about her. Celia radiated confidence and said that the cunning fox's powers would not work on her. The priestess had already taken her suitcase and was about to leave, but she replied glumly that it was a problem. Shura opened the door, gave Celia one last warning before she left, saying that one should not underestimate the fox's instincts, because one day they would make themselves known, and left the room. The blonde was left standing in the middle of the room. The fox had its side bandaged and was dozing in its cage. The girl sat down on his lap and looked at him with a pitying expression. Listening to his still, heavy breathing, she thought that even monsters had small and weak cubs. She compared her little self to him. That memory upset Celia, and she took the fox in her arms. He was warm, tiny, as if he was about to disappear. The blonde put the fox on her feet, and stroking his head, said that when he grew older, she would let him out quietly. Celia cheerfully told the fox to become an adult sooner, wished him to train to become a sacred animal, he should make a bunch of friends, meet a beautiful fox, and fall in love. The girl sincerely hoped that the cunning fox would be happy, and wished him to have everything. It was said of Celia that she was left on the outskirts of the capital with an uncircumcised umbilical cord. She almost became lunch for the monsters, but luckily she was found and taken to an orphanage. The orphanage building was dilapidated, but despite the hunger, this place became a home for the girl. Only the problem was her. The children gathered warily and leaned over the girl, who lay on the floor with her hand on her arm, screaming in pain. Someone informed the Lord that the girl was about to turn into a monster. The priests came running into the room. They grabbed Celia by the shoulders from behind. There was a red stain on the girl's arm and the priests began to pour holy water on the mark. She had a curse branded on her left shoulder. Once the priests saw that scar, it only got worse. The priests stood and talked among themselves. The girl was feared by the children. She was called a monster. One of them excitedly said that Celia reacted strangely to the holy water. Another replied that the child was cursed, so it was necessary to drive the evil spirits out of her. A man with a potty mouth said sadly that she had better not cross the road. The priestess said for him that a child had died not long ago because of the girl. A third asked them if Celia had divine powers, because it was their duty to raise children with powers well. Behind them, Celia was eavesdropping from around the corner. The others took up the idea and said cheerfully that the girl should be sent to the sacred state, because there the girl could be watched, but in the meantime, they would have to keep an eye on her. The children in the yard were playing ball. The main character sat lonely alone, cradling a soft toy. The girl sat and sadly thought that she was abandoned by her parents because she was really cursed. Suddenly the ball hit her right in the head, Celia cried out. The boys approached her. One of them asked her if she would curse them now. Another yelled that she reacted so strangely to the holy water. The kids mocked her and yelled that this wench was born to be a monster. The fearful priest told Celia that the merciful Solar had granted her divine power. But that was no reason to be proud, and if the girl's life was precious, she would be better off if she kept it a secret. Everyone called Celia a bug, a damned girl, a monster, telling her that she didn't deserve to live and that people like her didn't live long. The girl stood there with her head down and listened, and then she dropped her tattered and stitched up toy from her hands. Celia was lying on her bed. It was already dawn. She sat up and touched her mark. She considered herself a cursed monster, hurting people, but she still loved life. She wanted to survive. The main character used divine power for protection and was going to try to get stronger until she got the title of night. Celia's mark ached. She grasped her hand in pain and leaned over the bed, huddled against the pillow. She thought she had no right to ask for more. Morning came. The girl got up and looked at it. He was already looking at her with his bright amber eyes, all white and fluffy and healthy. Celia said in surprise that he had recovered so quickly. The girl leaned over him and thought that it seemed the little one was enough to have her around. Celia leaned even closer to the cage and said he was 19 years old. The fox perked up and growled at her. The protagonist asked him if he was hungry. 
she wondered aloud that the fox could use a drink. The girl went to the kitchen and brought the baby a bowl of water. She opened his cage and put the drink in front of him, saying that he must drink, for he had lost a lot of blood. The little fox approached the water, stuck out his tongue and turned away, not drinking. Celia asked him to take a sip, but the fox snapped at her and climbed back into the cage. The protagonist thought Shura was right when she said he had a bad temper. It would probably take time for the baby to get used to her. She gave him her hand, telling him not to be afraid because she wasn't going to hurt him. Celia took him in her arms. The little fox started to scream. The girl started to reassure him that everything was all right. She looked at him and exclaimed that he was such a baby and how could anyone harm such a baby? The fox looked at her unhappily and then mumbled pitifully and demandingly. The blonde guessed he wanted her to let him go. Celia told him to play in the room. She wouldn't lock him out. The little fox looked at her sweetly, waiting for her to finally let him go. The girl told him that he could drink and eat whenever he wanted, but she didn't have time to finish. Because the sly little fox saw the window and decided to run away from the blonde. He jumped out of her arms and headed for freedom. Celia opened her eyes in surprise, not expecting such a thing. She quickly turned after him, yelling at him to stop. The main character managed to grab him by the scruff of his neck. The little trickster was angry. He began to growl and snarl. The little rascal was only pretending to be cute, but that was expected from a fox. The fox twisted around and bit Celia's hand until it bled. He clung to her with his teeth and wanted to let go, but the girl didn't seem hurt and asked him to calm down. But the fox didn't want to calm down, and he scratched Celia's cheek. She cried out and pulled him to her, stroking his head to calm him down. The blonde's shirt was already covered in blood, and she held him close and whispered to him that no one would hurt him. After some persuasion, the fox agreed to let go of Celia's hand. She put him in the cage and closed it, saying that she would not let him out again today because he had broken their agreement. The little fox sat quietly looking at the girl. She was telling him that if he didn't run away, she would let him out, and tomorrow he would have another chance. Celia put a bowl of water in his cage and demanded that he drink, for if he didn't eat anything, he would get sick and asked him to try it. But the fox turned his face away, showing her that he didn't want to agree to drink her water at all. The protagonist looked at him sadly and turned away. The fox opened his eyes and looked at the water expressively. He remained sitting in front of the bowl. It was evening. Celia was walking down the street with Eric walking behind her. She asked him if he was done for the day. The guy said yes, and the others were coming back too. He continued to report that there were more monsters, and if this continued, the population would decrease. The girl had a wound on her face that the fox had left when they met. She remembered that she had brought him water, milk, and even a live chicken, but he hadn't touched anything. Celia looked at her wounded hands. After any of her sudden movements or touching him, he started to scream. The girl imagined him on a chain with a strong collar fastened close to his thin, delicate neck. She was sure he was being abused. The protagonist managed to find out that he had only been on the Western continent for two months, and she kept wondering if he had been captured on the Eastern continent as well. The girl kept thinking that anger and resentment could easily lodge in an evil heart, and if he suddenly turned into a monster, she would be forced to kill him. Celia thought of something and called out to Eric. She asked him if he had ever trained a dog. He blushed and embarrassedly said that he had trained dogs. His dog's name is Brahms, and they grew up together. The guy said his friend was a great hunter. Then he asked if the captain had a dog. Celia turned her back on him, saying she didn't have a dog, and made up that an acquaintance of hers was curious about what dogs liked. Eric started telling them that they liked to be petted and taken for walks and yams. The main character wondered if the fox would like yams. Eric noticed a wound on the captain's cheek and wondered if the dog had left the scratch. Celia lied that she had a puppy, but it was nothing, and asked him not to worry. The guy smiled at her and started laughing. The girl asked him why he was laughing, but Eric didn't answer. The blonde came to her room and found that the fox again had not eaten anything. She had a full bag of yams in her hands. She told him that this would not do because he could not go hungry for so long. The little guy sat in his cage and looked at the girl with disdain. 
Celia stood confidently and told him that today she would make him eat. The fox turned his important face away from her. The main character put one yam in his cage and stood waiting for him to eat it. The fox looked at her in surprise. The girl thought that the vegetable didn't seem to impress him and she wasn't sure he would eat it. The fox was wary of the yams. Celia encouraged him, telling him to imagine it was prey, but the fox didn't like it. Then the girl decided that maybe she should try to bring it to his mouth. She took the yam and brought it close to him. The fox started to crouch. The girl asked him to smell it, but the fox got angry, roared, and with his powerful paw broke the yam. The fox was covered in yams. Looking at him, Celia thought he was very strong, and she was relieved that he was full of energy. Now the girl had to clean up the mess the fox had made. She opened the cage and took him in her arms. He started to fight her off and screamed, the fox urging her not to touch him and to leave him alone. He swung at her, and his claws went straight for her neck. A large drop of blood landed on the fox's forehead. The blood began to drip down and form a puddle. Celia grabbed her neck. The fox was sitting and looking at her the whole time. Then the girl grabbed him with her and pressing the wound with her hand, went to treat the cut, holding the insolent fox in her other hand. Fox hung calmly in her arms, remembering his past, in which some angry man with one wounded eye swung a whip at him, calling him an idiot. The fox was scared and in pain. The man threatened him that he would not let him go so easily and swung hard at him, which threw the fox into the wall. The wounded man, watching the suffering of the poor little fox, laughed. While the girl was bandaging her wound, she noticed that the fox was stiff. She stroked his head, asking him if he was scared. Celia reassured him that he hadn't done anything wrong, because it was all the evil people's fault, because they didn't understand anything and called him a monster so they hurt him. Fox looked at the girl sadly with tears in his eyes. The main character comforted him, telling him she was sorry and asking him to hold on. He bowed his head to her and snuggled up to her. They sat at the table, snuggled together. Celia picked him up and looked at him, asking if he was okay. The fox looked at her calmly. The blonde turned him around and showed him a bowl of water. She asked him if he wanted a drink and asked him to take a sip. He looked at her then, at the water. The girl lowered him to the bowl and the baby began to drink. Celia was happy and thanked him. She leaned back in her chair quietly. A couple days had passed. The day was coming to an end. The girl was walking with two bags of goodies for the fox. She was late again today, but Celia was glad that the fox slept a lot and said aloud that if he ate everything she brought, next time she would bring him live chickens and ducks. When she entered the room, she didn't hear him. Putting out the groceries, she turned to look around the room, asking herself why he was quiet and thought he might be asleep. Celia called out when he didn't respond. She ran over to his cage worriedly. The fox was lying in his cage with his tongue out, a puddle of water beside him. It was daytime. Bright sunshine was penetrating the fox's cage. He was sitting and looking out the window. He yawned and began to lick his paws. The sly fox looked at the bowl of water and remembered the girl's words that he had done nothing wrong, because it was all evil people. Fox lay down beside the water and wondered what Celia wanted to tell him with that, and closing his eyes thought with certainty that it was all his fault. A girl stood in the garden back with long hair and luxurious giant robes. On her head was a fancy-shaped hairpin that held a tall bundle. All her dress was golden. She was glowing, as if all the sun was concentrated in her, and she radiated its rays. She turned and a little fox jumped to her and called her mother. The girl was beautiful. Her eyes were lined with red eyeliner that made her bright yellow eyes stand out like the fox's. The little fox tearfully told her mother that he missed her very much. But the next moment, the fox lowered her long ears and called out to her mother, blood flowing from her mouth. He stood and watched as his mother fell without signs of life, a pool of blood forming near her mouth. Some strange, long-haired man addressed him that he too would become a sacred being like his mother. So it would be better to get rid of him too. He grabbed it by the scruff of its neck and the fox began to growl and lash out. The man threw the baby into the portal. He fell in with a man judging by his rich clothes, an aristocrat with long wavy hair. He hovered over the fox who was chained up and said that it had been a long time since he had had such a precious baby in his hands. 
The scary man took a whip in his hands and started beating the poor fox. The fox was trembling with fear, screaming and trying to run away or dodge the blows. The fox managed to escape. He ran through the fire on the hot road and only thought that he had to run. It was a terrible dream, he was called by the girl's affectionate voice. He opened his crying eyes to Celia. The blonde was asking him what was wrong and if he was all right. Fox lifted his head and exhaled heavily after such an exhausting, horrible nightmare. He saw that he was still in the same spot in the cage and Celia was sitting next to him. Fox stood up and looked at her. The girl was glad she hadn't come too late. The girl told him that she came home from work and when she saw him like that, she was very scared. The main character took the little fox in her arms. The fox sniffed at the girl and her scent filled him with the smell of his mom. He snuggled up to her, Celia stroking him, and telling him that when he grew up, he would tell her about all the people who bullied him. The girl promised that she would punish them all. Celia had cut up the yams and was now boiling them. She said aloud that she knew why it was bad last time, because she had to boil it first, as she had been told by the happy Eric, who had brought it to her to taste. The fox was lying on the pillow and watching the blonde. The girl turned to him and asked him if he wanted to know what name she had come up with for him. She told him that the name had come to her suddenly, and she had called him Ran. Fox looked at her in surprise, that spirit name deeply embedded in his heart. Fox played in his mother's arms as she sat with her back against the tree, among the beautiful flowers and butterflies. His mother called him Ran, and told him that if he met someone who called him by his name, he would have to be careful because that person would be able to discern his true nature. The little fox asked what if this person just guessed his name. Mama, cradling him in her arms, replied that however it was, his soul would tell him. The baby looked at Celia, who was calling him by the name his mother had called him. He looked at her in surprise with his big amber eyes. The girl said cheerfully that she thought that name would suit him. Fox frowned and thought it was probably just a coincidence. He turned away from her. Celia asked him incomprehensibly why he was pouting. The main character looked over and exclaimed that the food seemed to be ready. The fox thought she was weird. In the opinion of the fox, this girl behaved atypically from the very beginning. Because among all the monsters, she took him. Because how did she determine that he was different from other supernatural beings? Because, as the fox thought, she was the most ordinary knight. Celia nibbled some yam and blew on it to cool it down a bit while the fox was sniffing it. The girl put her finger in his mouth for him to taste. He chewed angrily and thought that the girl was crazy and how she had such a flair. But the fox was angry for nothing, because when he bit into the treat, he really liked the taste of the dish. The blonde said she had cooked him enough so that he could eat and set him a plate with peeled pieces of yams. The fox pounced on the food. Celia watched him and admired him. She didn't know foxes loved yams so much. The girl looked up at him. He had beautiful golden eyes, a mesmerizing snow-white tail. She picked him up in her arms and cuddled him, asking him why he was so cute. The main character picked him up and kissed him on the forehead. She lifted him above her and happily said that she would now call him Wounds. The fox cub was embarrassed. He blushed, and the girl cradled him again, saying he was cute. She gave the fox a strange feeling as she kissed. He didn't realize what kind of person she was, the fox yapped at her. It had been a couple days. The girl walked down the corridor in her armor, covered in bandages and bandages. The fox was now responding to her name, but he was even more fierce than before, and yet Celia was glad that he was finally eating. The protagonist thought about the fact that he had probably handled the mistrust. Eric called out to her from behind. He sadly saw that the captain was scarred again and asked her what was wrong. Celia replied that there was no reason to worry. Eric replied that even if she didn't like it, they wouldn't be able to stay away, and he told her that the others were worried too, and suggested that maybe it would be better to go to a treatment center. The girl turned away from him and said that the wound was small, so it was not worth disrupting the training. But Eric clenched his hand into a fist, apologized to the captain, and called two more knights Biliato and Rauno. The guys walked over and grabbed the girl under her arms. They both excitedly apologized to her, but it's a forced measure because they're worried about her. Eric said they would take her to the infirmary. 
The guys who were leading her under her arms thought the captain was more obedient than they thought. But then one of them tripped and Celia picked him up in her arms. She asked him if he was all right. Biliato and Eric stood behind him embarrassed, even more embarrassed and blushing. Rauno told the captain he was fine. They did lead her to the infirmary. Before leaving, Eric asked the priestess to take care of the captain. Celia sat quietly, as Shura drilled her with a stern and frowning look. She couldn't stand it and asked her furiously that the nine-tailed fox had left all the wounds. She kept asking how the captain could have let that happen. The girl replied that it was all nothing. The priestess interrupted her, saying that her wounds were terrible. She asked why she didn't just come to her. Shura began to treat the wounds and said that the knight's clothes were tight. If she left it like that, the wounds might fester. The girl continued to be angry with Celia, saying that with such wounds she went to the battlefield and swung her sword, and that she had forgotten about the healer. The protagonist condescendingly asked her to stop being mad at her. Shura shoved a bag into her hands and told her to drink the medicine, apply the ointment, and next time asked her to listen to her comrades, because she was like a lone wolf, because she was pushing everyone away from her. Celia interrupted the flow of her discontent by thanking her. The priestess was still angry and looked at her thinking the girl was speaking confidently, but noticed how embarrassed she was while looking cute. Shura followed the captain and said that she had decided to keep the fox after all, and he kept lunging at her and asked if the girl had figured out how to stand up to him. Celia turned to her and admitted that the fox cub had gotten quite angry lately. The girl concentrated on teaching him manners. Shura was shocked. It was sunset. There were many people on the streets. Celia came to the pet store. The saleswoman greeted her cheerfully, but when she saw the visitor in armor, she was surprised and wondered what a holy knight was doing here. She politely asked the girl that she probably had the wrong store. Celia had been looking at the assortment of the store until then and looked at the saleswoman incomprehensibly. The main character asked if they had shampoo. The girl asked what kind of animal she had. Celia thought for a while and still answered that she had a doggy. Then the saleswoman embarrassingly offered a beautiful pink bottle with a picture of a rose and a bow on the cap. The saleswoman said it smelled like roses and was very popular among aristocrats. Celia replied that the scent was too distinctive, and her pet was very sensitive to odors, and if he didn't like it, he might get angry. Then the girl behind the counter suggested another product. It didn't smell at all, and perfectly coped with dirt. The main character took it in her hands and said she would take it. She looked away, studying the products, and in a couple of minutes she had two full bags with various toys and goodies. The saleswoman happily said that the girl liked animals. Celia scratched the back of her head and replied that it was only the essentials. The girl asked her to wait and said that for such a large order she would give her a gift. Celia thanked her and left with five bags filled to the top with toys. The saleswoman, glowing with joy, told her to come back again. The girl came when it was already dark. She called out to Ron, asking where he was. Celia went to his room and found him on his bed. The fox was sleeping. Walking up to him, the girl asked him he was here alone, already bored without her. But then the protagonist noticed his dirty paws. She was surprised and guessed that Ran was trying to escape again. Celia grabbed his paws and excitedly said that she had warned him before not to touch the barrier. The fox cub was angry and started screaming. The barrier was supposed to prevent escape, and Ran tried to get out anyway. Luckily, the fox only had a little bit of scorched fur. The fox didn't like the girl touching him and tried in every way possible to get out. Unable to stand it, he bit her finger. Celia tried to calm him down, telling him not to be afraid because she just wanted to see if he was okay. Ran thought angrily that the girl kept prying at him even after his bites and scratches and called her crazy. Celia looked at her and smiled, thinking he was being quiet. Every time the girl called the fox by name, his heart started pounding frantically every time. So this strange feeling made him involuntarily push her away, making her body covered with lacerations. Ran began to lick, the bite he had just left behind. Celia asked him what he was doing. He started to caress against her hand. He didn't want to hurt her anymore. The protagonist pulled him against her and thanked him happily. The blonde told the wound that he had something for him, 
and showed him a teddy bear. The fox had been alone for a long time, so she decided to get him a present. Ran sniffed at the toy cautiously at first, and then grabbed it sharply with his sharp fangs. The fox started tearing the toy and rubbing it in different directions, which caused the bear to burst and the synthesizer to fly around the room. Celia only watched the insolent fox, who managed to handle the toy and lay contentedly on the floor. She sat down beside him and guiltily said that she should have gotten something stronger. The protagonist walked over to the bags and said it wasn't the most important gift yet and pulled out the shampoo. Fox looked at her suspiciously. The tub was ready and Celia walked over to Ran, telling him it was bath time. The little fox immediately began to growl. The girl had succeeded in getting the little Rana to take a bath after all. And now he sat scowling and discontented in the water with a cap on his head and a duckling. Celia cheerfully urged him to look at the pretty duck that swam past him, but he only became more angry and jumped up in the tub, splashing the water. Celia decided to leave him and start washing him. She squeezed a little of the product onto her hand and rubbed it on his fur, telling him not to be cranky. The little fox screamed and pulled away, not liking it very much. The girl reassured him, telling him that he had to wash, otherwise he might get sick, and promised him that she would finish quickly. But the fox couldn't stand it any longer, and broke out of Celia's arms. He ran away from her. The girl, covered in soap, told him that the shampoo had to be washed off. Ran turned to look at her, and when he tried to stand on his feet, he slipped and crashed into the cabinet. He couldn't take the blow and wanted to pin the poor fox to the floor, but the girl arrived in time to cover Ran. The cupboard did not fall, but Celia received a strong blow on her back which made her cry out. Foxy looked at her guiltily. The girl looked at him with tired eyes all wet and foamy and said it was okay. The blow landed on her branded hand. She, putting the cabinet back in place, asked him if he was hurt. Ron mumbled something. Celia took him in her arms and offered to rinse the shampoo off him. The fox immediately became sad. The girl asked him to be a good boy. A lone duckling was left floating in the tub. Ran sat covered with a blanket, ears hanging down, trembling. Celia thought about how to calm him down and offered him a snack, but the fox remained seated, so she sat down and said she wondered if he was so frightened for her. She had a red spot on her leg. The little fox looked at her with amber eyes and remembered his mother's words that if he met someone who called him by name, he had to be careful, for that person would be able to discern his true nature, so he had to not miss that person for anything. Ran sat still under the towel and pondered his mother's words, why she had said it would be a human. Celia, standing with her back to him, said she had brought him something to eat, and turned to him with a bag of something and offered him some horse meat jerky. She gave him a plate of meat, but the fox sat sad and did not touch the treat. The main character asked him in surprise what he didn't like, but the store had told her that it was the best meat. The baby got down from the couch and came to the wound on Celia's leg. He started to lick it, but the girl misunderstood him and sharply intercepted him in her arms and sternly said that people should not be eaten. She told him menacingly that human meat was unpalatable and it was forbidden to hurt people. The fox was worried. He mewled. Celia held him close to her and suggested that the poor little fox was hungry after his bath. He folded his paws resentfully. The protagonist lowered him to the floor and said she would bring him something to eat. He followed her and started pointing, as if to say that she had an injured leg and needed to rest. But the girl didn't understand him and said he must have had enough of running around. The fox hung his ears in frustration. Celia held a cage covered with a pillowcase and cheerfully said that he could eat as much as he wanted. The protagonist, with the words that he could eat chickens, not people, took the chicken out of the cage. The little guy took hold of his head with his paw, as if to show that the girl was completely crazy. A man with long hair resembling silver stood in the bright room and looked out the window. He knew that a nine-tailed fox was born. It had transparent piercing eyes. The unknown man said that if Celia acknowledged, the Kumiho would really turn into a sacred monster. The man was in a white suit with gold jewelry. He decided that he really shouldn't have killed him then. The white-haired man stood in front of the mirror and pondered aloud that it was indeed amazing that Celia had lived a full 23 years. 
Behind him stood a girl with beautifully braided black-colored hair. It pained him to see her futile attempts to survive, for no matter how hard she tried, she would die. He raised his hand and cast magic, and the mirror showed Celia with the fox and the chicken she'd brought for him. The unknown man looked at her and called her a poor child. He said that Celia even became a knight to survive. It made him feel sick at heart, for fate was too cruel. In the enchanted mirror, Celia held the fox in her arms and smiled at him with tired eyes. The fox looked directly at the man who was watching them, and from his gaze the mirror shattered and the shards flew straight at the white-haired man. The man, crushing a shard with his shoe, said that the young fox had amazing sacred powers. Was he really surprised that the little fox had sensed their presence? The unknown man looked at himself in the broken mirror and decided that he would have to get rid of it when he grew up. The girl behind him looked at him worriedly through the mirror. He was sure Celia would raise him well, and in time he would be able to turn into a spirit. And as he got older, this monster would only become more dangerous. The girl behind him nodded to him. The man, moving away from the mirror, told himself that she shouldn't have grasped at life so desperately, and it was better to just kill herself. He would bury her along with the sunlight, and there would be lovely lilies blooming on her grave every year and she should leave a place for the future generation and just fade away. Celia was sitting in the library reading a book that said that at 10 years old, a fox gets the ability to take human form, and at 20 years old, it becomes a full-grown adult. She pondered aloud that if he would be an adult in a year, that meant he was now 19 years old. But then why the fox wasn't becoming human was unclear. She'd had the fox for quite some time now, but had never taken human form. But Celia thought he wasn't a spirit, and maybe the nine-tailed foxes were different. Kumiho were choosing their only life companion, and it was best not to touch what was theirs, and whoever touched a fox on the approaches to the spirit world would be in trouble. Celia was surprised by this, as many monsters didn't place much importance on partnerships. But it seems Kumi were so few that only in legends could they be found. The girl wondered if the little fox was going to live alone until he met a fox and imagined a pink fox with a bow on his ear. But then, the protagonist wondered what would happen if his companion died. The girl felt sorry for him, even though no one had appeared on the horizon yet. After that, Celia was serious about teaching the fox boy, so she began to explain that there were different kinds of companions, but he should choose a strong woman, then they would have strong children. The girl kept saying that of course he was strong, but it wasn't enough, so he should not let the monsters hurt him. The fox sat bored, listening to the girl's ramblings, his long ears down, and he yawned. Celia asked that he stop yawning, and asked him to take a better look at the book she had brought with her. She showed him the image, and told him that it said that Kumiho choose a companion for life. The main character leaned closer to him so he could understand her words, and said that such were their instincts, and sooner or later, he would be attracted to another vixen. So, she scratched him behind his ear. He should choose wisely, for he would need a good companion in the future. Ran turned his head to her hand and licked it. Celia grabbed him in her arms and told him that she couldn't help him now, but asked him that he would visit her if there was any difficulty, and cradled him in her arms. The girl promised him that she could help him make a decision. The little fox looked at her seriously. The priestess shouted entering the room, and opening the door stood on the threshold, watching Celia, sitting on the floor cradling the fox cub. They sat down on the couches, and the girl thanked Shura for the visit. Celia just wanted to make sure Ran was okay. The fox mumbled. But what really worried the girl was that the fox wasn't turning into a human. Shura asked her if she was afraid to let the fox out of its cage. The protagonist, stroking his head, replied that he was not aggressive at all. The priestess asked that she didn't lock him up at night either, and the girl replied that she didn't want her to worry. Ran snuggled up against Celia, his eyes closed, and he mumbled peacefully. Shura thought it was dangerous and asked the girl not to let her guard down too much because it was a male. She turned to the fox and told him not to mess around because there would be trouble. The fox looked at her suspiciously and thought she was annoying him. Celia asked to be allowed to feed him since it was already mealtime. Shura replied that it was no problem. The girl took the cage with the excited chicken again and said that it was the biggest and juiciest chicken 
But Ron stared angrily at the priestess, who was already excitedly and irritably asking him why he was staring at her like that. The protagonist picked up the fox in her arms, carried the chicken in the other, and told Shura she would take him to his room because he liked to eat alone. It was night. Ran broke into the cage and stepped on her with his paw. He took her life force. Licking his paw, he thought that he had little spiritual strength, and if he continued like this, he would not grow up in a year. He hadn't wanted to grow up like this, even when he'd been bullied, but now he was looking forward to it. Celia noticed that the fox had gotten rid of the chicken, and now it was lying on the floor with its wings spread apart. Ran felt Celia's pain. He would sneak into her room unnoticed and see her in pain. At times like this, the girl wouldn't let him into the room and tried to cope on her own. Sometimes he wanted to gnaw away all the pain, and he was overcome with a terrible hunger, so he wanted to grow up soon, because he would be bigger and stronger. The fox sat in a dark room, a thin strip of light from the living room through the ajar door, and the voices of Shura and Celia came from there. The priestess had forgotten her herbs in the healing room and excitedly informed the girl. The protagonist asked her if they were so necessary. Shura replied that if they were not pulverized today, they would spoil. Then the captain suggested that she would bring them herself. The priestess asked her to stay here, but the girl was adamant and said that she would go quickly and demanded that she wait for her here. Shura excitedly said she shouldn't, but the girl had already said she'd be back soon and walked out. The little fox left the room. The priestess hoped that everything would be all right. The sly fox sat by the door and waved his gorgeous ponytail. He looked at Shura and thought that if he absorbed her spirit, he could become bigger and stronger. The priestess sat down on the couch and said that she shouldn't have let Celia leave because now she felt guilty. She opened her eyes and was startled when she saw the fox in front of her. Shura put her hand forward warily and told him to stay away. But the little fox made a cute face and mewed pitifully. The priestess was affected by his strength and blushing. She walked over to him, squatting down in front of him, saying he was rather cute. Foxy made an even cuter face. The girl exclaimed what an adorable baby he was and would have bitten his cute little nose. She reached out to stroke his head, but then he changed his expression and his eyes turned a blindingly bright amber. Celia came up in time and called him sternly. The little boy turned to her. The girl looked at him sternly with tired eyes. Shura came to her senses and grabbing her head asked what was wrong. The blonde told her that she must have a migraine. She'd better rest. The priestess was doubtful, for she had not yet examined the fox. But the protagonist said that everything was fine and asked her to go rest. The fox sat upset and looked guiltily at the girl. Celia closed the door behind Shura and stood with her back to the fox for a while. Ran, hanging his ears, sadly noticed that Celia, always very sweet now, was for the first time so cold. The protagonist turned to him and sternly told him that if he hurt a defenseless person, she would have to kill him or he would have to get rid of her. The fox looked at her sadly. The girl continued to say calmly that Shura had come to check on his health. They all realize he's not an easy kumiho. Right now he was a bit sick and needed help and asked him what he wanted them to be on bad terms. Foxy lowered his ears and lowered his head guiltily, looking down at the floor. He jumped off the couch and began to paw at the girl's legs. Celia asked him if he thought about his behavior. The fox looked at her. The girl reached down and took him in her arms, holding him close to her, asking him not to do it again. Then Ran realized that he couldn't hurt innocent people, after all. Celia had asked him to. The girl returned home, taking off her armor and looking around the room in an attempt to find the fox. The fox jumped out at her feet. The protagonist offered him to play. Celia lay on the bed and threw a toy mouse on a stick in front of Ran. He jumped up and hit the toy with his paw. The girl watched him and thought that it was said that foxes resembled puppies in body and kittens in behavior. After the incident with Shura, they became even closer. The protagonist brought more chicken to Ran, but he turned away from her. Then Celia brought the cage with the loud chicken close to him with the words that at such an age one should eat well and asked him why he was sulking again. The chicken cackled loudly. The fox got angry. The girl happily asked him to eat. 
Ran turned the chicken cage upside down. It broke out of the cage and flapped its wings. The fox didn't react and remained seated. Celia jumped up, asking him what had happened and why he had turned it upside down. The fox grudgingly replied something to her. Celia was attacked by the hen, clawing at her hair, causing the sly fox to laugh gloatingly. The girl with the disheveled hair was surprised that he was laughing at her. She was trying so hard to catch that chicken, chasing it all over the forest. The protagonist asked why he was so picky, but the fox was adamant. The fox angrily clung to the cage. The girl indignantly told him that if he continued to behave like this, she would stop bringing him food. The wren did nothing about it, but just turned his cheeky face away from the girl. Celia got angry with him and told him she wouldn't feed him until he apologized. Ran grimaced at this and stayed sitting like that. Shura and Celia were walking through the garden, and the blonde said that the fox hadn't eaten for three days, and if it continued like this, it would start to have health problems. The priestess reassured the girl, telling her not to worry, because Kumiho don't starve to death. But Celia went on to say that he was completely weakened and gaunt, and suggested that maybe he was depressed because he stayed at home all the time. But after all, it was a forest creature. The girl wondered if that made sense. She continued to ponder aloud that Ran was probably cramped at home. Shura offered to widen the barrier, but the blonde replied that it would take a lot of sacred power. Celia reassured herself that everything would be fine. Of course it was dangerous to use so much energy, but there was nothing that could be done. Under her arm, Shura told her that it was impossible to leave the fox in such a state. The moon was full, the girl in the yard was extending the barrier, when she was done, she came home. Ran was lying on his cot. Celia went over to him and told him they needed to talk and pulled his paw, asking if he was still sad. The fox opened one eye and looked at the girl. He grudgingly stood up and looked at her. Celia asked him to talk and noticed how cute the fox was. She took him in her arms and asked him to look at her. Ran was cranky and started to scream. The girl scratched his ear and called out to him, saying she had something to tell him. The fox cub bit her a little, not to the point of bleeding. He didn't want to look at Celia and closed his eyes. The girl asked him to listen, but he didn't want to react in any way. Then the protagonist asked that he still wouldn't look. The sly fox ufked. She turned him to himself and said that she wanted to make up with him. Celia went outside with him and told him that maybe the food she brought back wasn't so good. But the girl had been wandering the woods for days to find sustenance. The fox snorted at that. The protagonist said with a smile that she didn't know he was so unhappy about sitting at home and eating the same thing, and as an apology she prepared a present for him. He looked at her. The girl asked him to look around. Ran looked and saw a wonderful forest. The blonde said he could walk here now. Celia looked at the fox and noticed that he didn't look happy. He couldn't go far into the forest because of the barrier, but it was better than sitting at home here he could walk and hunt. The girl let him go. The fox lifted his paw and looked questioningly at the grass. Celia said he hadn't eaten in a while and walked over to a huge cage that was covered with a red scarf. She took it off. There was a bear in the cage. The blonde had captured the bear for him. The fox stared at her unhappily. Celia turned around and told him to eat and then come home, or the bear was dangerous. The girl went to the kitchen and poured herself some tea, hoping he would like her gift. She heard the fox scrabbling at the door, opened it. The fox came in and lay down on the bed. Celia asked if he wanted to play today, but Ron just lay down and that was it. The girl thought he was tired. A couple of days later, the protagonist was sitting at the table reading a book, and Ron came home through the ajar door. Celia asked him why he wasn't walking as there was so much to do in the forest, but the fox snorted. The girl went outside with him and asked him if he was afraid. Celia stayed sitting on the grass outside the house with a book in her hands and told him not to worry. Ran turned to her and then went further into the woods. The little fox came to her. The girl asked him he came to her to see if she was gone. She asked him if he wanted to play some more or go home. Ran looked at her pitifully. Celia watched him for a couple of days and realized that he liked to play outside but he didn't seem to like to spend too much time out there. The protagonist thought it was because he had spent most of his life locked up. Before he went for a further walk, he turned to Celia and looked at her sadly. The girl wondered what had happened to Ran's mother. 
and thought that she was probably a very strong monster. But why this baby was left all alone and what happened to it after birth, the girl did not know. When they first met, he wouldn't let anyone near him. And even now he didn't like his neck being touched. Celia suspected he couldn't turn into a human because of childhood traumas. The fox came back to the girl, but now, not with mere hands, he had a squirrel in his mouth. He was happily showing his prey to Celia. The protagonist was pleased and smiled at him. He was waiting for her to praise him. The girl, stroking the fox's head, thought that she should be patient, and Ron would turn into a human when the time was right. And now let him frolic. The main thing was that he was happy now. The sunlight was streaming into the room through the curtains, things were scattered everywhere, and the girl stood clutching her shirt with her hand where the mark had been. It was hurting her again. Her pain only got worse. Celia sat at the table and rested her head on her hands. The girl thought that maybe the pain had gotten worse due to the barrier expanding. She remembered the words of the guys at the orphanage that she should die. Tears sprang up in the protagonist's eyes and she let her shirt slip off her shoulder, branded bright red. Celia felt like she was burning alive. Eric knocked on the girl's door and walked into the office. He worriedly informed her that the monsters had appeared again. Celia sat with a tortured expression and looked at him with tired eyes, thinking that the monsters were getting bigger and bigger. Eric said that the damage was very impressive. The monsters appeared where no one expected them and destroyed the garrison at the border. The girl asked where it happened. The lad replied that it was said to be in the northwest near Arenald Canyon. Celia hurriedly began to pack and hurried the night to go rather get ready. This was very strange, and the protagonist needed to contact the kingdom urgently. Her mark still hurt, but she ordered herself to endure, for she had to survive to protect the one she had become so dear to, the fox cub, sacred Gaian kingdom. A man with long gray hair with a cap on his head, wearing sacred robes, excitedly said that the divine barrier stone protecting the continent had completely lost its magic power. He asked the young man when this had happened. The man with blonde hair and dressed in almost the same clothes as the old man replied that last night had lost its power and the barrier was almost gone, and soon it would be completely destroyed. He asked if the saints should be questioned. The older man said that would not do, for he had seen the stigma, and they dared not question them. Another young man came in and angrily asked what all the noise was about. The old man turned fearfully in his direction. The man looked at them with contempt. Celia killed the monster. The knight stood and looked at the captain in surprise. A viscous, slimy purple blood was left of the monster. The girl called Eric and ordered him to deal with the monster's corpses. At night, the main character came home. The fox cub was sleeping, but the girl woke him up when she opened the door to his room. She sat down to him and apologized. The girl, stroking his soft fur, said that she was trying not to make noise. The little fox covered his eyes and mewed. Celia loved coming home. She wondered if that was the charm of the nine-tailed fox, for he captivated people with his cuteness. The girl's caresses made the little fox fall back asleep on the cot. The books described the kumiho differently, saying that the nine-tailed fox charmed people and sucked out their life force. The fox rolled over onto his back, Celia scratching his tummy, thinking how cute he looked. She asked him if he liked it. The fox looked at her and bounced away from her with a startled growl. Celia asked excitedly he was mad at her for being late. The fox snorted angrily. The girl stood up and said she was sorry. Walking over to him, she started to say that she had a lot on her plate lately, but didn't finish as her mark started to hurt badly again. The girl grabbed her arm in pain and sat up a little. Celia regained her former smiling face and quickly asked Ran if he wanted a snack. The usual goodies didn't impress him much, and they hadn't played at all lately. The fox cub in the distance, standing warily. Celia went to the kitchen, Ran followed her, and started to paw at her feet. The girl put the pieces of meat in a bowl and put it in front of the fox, saying that he had chicken jerky for dinner tonight. The fox began to eat. The main character sat down in front of him and asked him if he could turn into a human. The little fox tore himself away from his food and looked at her. Celia told him that she had read that Kumiho take human form when they reached the age of 10. He was already 19. The fox sat and listened to her intently. 
He lowered his ears and snorted at her. The girl stared at him in surprise and asked if she had frightened him, and he snorted again. Celia took him in her arms and calmed him down, saying that she just wanted to check if he had any health problems. And if he had any, he would have to let her know. The protagonist cradled him to her and told him that it was getting late and it was time for them to go to bed. Before falling asleep, the girl wished Ran sweet dreams. The next day, Eric suddenly burst into her office, the captain jumping up from her seat. The knight was panting, trying to say that the matter was urgent. The girl went around the table and asked him to calm down and then to speak normally. The boy, after catching his breath a little, shouted in a panic that a guard had come. Celia looked at him questioningly and asked what the guard was doing here. The boy began to say excitedly that he didn't know why he had come. Then the protagonist asked what he told him. Eric replied that the guard said nothing special, but wished to talk to the captain personally. It was surprising to the girl that the guard had come to them in Grinia. She told Eric that she would contact him and he could go.